Hello and welcome to Stripe Tour here from New York. I'm here today with Steve Kaliski, friend of the show, regular. Steve, how are you doing? Good, thanks for having me. We have some exciting announcements we to do, talk about yes. today. Yes. So you're going to be talking to us a little bit about some of these new announcements. What, what, what are you going to show us today? Yeah, sure. So yesterday uh, we announced what we're calling the Agenda Com Commerce Protocol, which we co-developed with OpenAI. And as part of that was their launch of Instant Checkout and ChatGPT, so you can really try this stuff out in practice. And under the hood is something Stripe has created called the Shared Payment Token, mm -hmm. which is a way for an agent to securely transfer and share a payment credential with the seller. Um, so we're going to walk through uh, the protocol, we're going to walk through that new payment token. So how does this agentic commerce protocol change the way that we interact or, or buy things from a consumer point of view? Yeah, sure. So imagine regular purchase or whatever we're going to have to call it now. Um, you go to the merchant's website, you browse the products, mm -hmm. you pick one out, maybe you pick uh, you know, a color or a size, put in your shipping information and click buy. The entire experience of that transaction has occurred in the seller's domain, right? So their website, their backend, their payment processing. And now with Agenta Commerce, you know, with ChatGPT, for example, part of that experience is happening outside the seller's environment, right? You're in ChatGPT, you've given it a prompt, you see some products, you pick one and you're buying there. And what the protocol uh, attempts to do is basically figure out how to bridge the user experience that's occurring in that application or with that agent to the seller's existing backend and payment processing. Okay, so it's like a bridge between the seller and whatever agent they're using to allow you to purchase their product. Exactly, and we think that having sort of a consistent model for how sellers can express their checkout and their payment processing means that sellers can sort of have one integration um, that works for all different kinds of agents. Uh -huh. Um, and then that uh, agents can build their product experience in their unique way uh, and over time have a growing network of sellers that are available. And you mentioned something called the shared payment token. What, tell us a little bit about what this is and what this change is. Yeah, sure. So you know, back to that original modeling, you know, you're in the seller's checkout website. They have the, you know, hopefully Stripe Elements form or using Stripe Checkout to mm -hmm. collect the details. They're processing it within their account, right? So it's all within their domain. But here, you know, you know uh, you know, we just said, we're talking about how much Stripe powers these agentic applications. You probably already have a payment method on file with the agent, right? So maybe you have your monthly recurring subscription, um, or, or certainly you're collecting the payment method you know, with the agent before purchase. And that's separate from the seller, right? So we need to figure out a way of, how do I relay that pre-existing credential, you know, whether it's a card or link or another payment method, over to the seller to process that transaction? So you know, typically, you know, we have the normal Stripe payment method, which is local to that one Stripe account. The shared payment token is the way that we uh, help relay credentials collected in one Stripe account and share it with limited access, you know, seller scoped, amount scoped, time scoped, so on and so forth, to a seller to process. So does this mean if I, as a, a customer, have bought something somewhere on the internet using Stripe, there's a payment method associated with my purchase? Yeah, so if you're like a link user, for example, and you've purchased on one domain, um, your credentials are already saved, and yep. maybe you go into a product like ChatGPT or another AI application, your credentials are already there, uh, and now Stripe is helping, you, yet again, relay that with permission controls to a seller to uh, run a payment intent against. So what's the unique identifier for it to know who I was from two different um, entry points? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, on the seller side, the shared payment token is scoped to a particular Stripe seller. Mm -hmm. right? So this is backed by the Stripe network, which we talked about earlier. So I can say, you know, uh, I want to create a, and we'll show it in a second, I want to create a shared payment token for $10 that expires at the end of the day for the Stripe seller with this identifier. And, you know, hopefully I've shared that to the correct destination, um, but in the event I haven't, the token doesn't work at all. Right, so it requires the auth context of that seller to actually process and run and charge against that credential. Um, and then certainly on the buyer side, you know, with Link we have, uh, you know, the understanding of the identity and in and, and context of the customer there. And of course, you know, agents will have their own relationships with customers and that's how they can collect details to relay over as well. Okay, let's get into the demo then. Yeah, sure. Show me how okay. this works in, so in practice. So on the left, we're gonna start with the base case. So on the left-hand side, I have a pretty normal, uh, TypeScript code sample where I'm going to create a payment intent under the test, uh, you know, uh, credit card. Mm -hmm. I'm going to charge 
twenty dollars, and let's just let's first just confirm that works, right? So we'll run that. Let Let's just step back one second. Sure. Yeah. What's a payment intent for oh, people sure. that are great, maybe great, new okay, to great Stripe? Question, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a payment intent is the sort of uh, low level primitive Stripe has for processing payments, um, and the intent part is you know. I hope it happens, mm. right? Um, and there are many downstream things like 3DS and other step ups um, that you know lead in intent to outcome. Um, and you can pass in basically the amount, the currency, any payment method. So Stripe supports hundreds of payment methods. In this case, I just went with card. Um, so yeah, that's the the base layer uh, per, so, for payment. So like an object, a Stripe object that yes. represents a payment at a specific point in time, yes. like a state machine almost. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so we've gone ahead and you know, just to illustrate, we've, we've made one. So th again, this is the pre-agentic version. So we have our payment intent for $20. It was actually captured. Um, you know, some other information here, you can see the charge. The payment only. intent always has the PI underscore yeah, uh, before exactly. the ID, right? You can yeah. see the payment method that it referred back to. Um, you know, we were gonna support card and link, and of course it succeeded. Now, this is the example of I'm, you know, the whole thing is occurring in my domain. I've collected the payment method that we passed in. I'm running the payment intent. I'm linking it into my back end, you know, so on and so forth. And, and when you say I, you're, you're the as seller. the seller. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. Now, let's imagine the case where there's an agent now. So the agent is collecting the payment method details, and the agent wants to relay some token that's usable by the seller. And our goal is basically, how can we make the change required by the seller to be just one line of code. So we're gonna see that in practice. Um, I'm gonna cheat and copy code I've already written. We're gonna uh, include the second uh, Stripe account. So we have our Stripe agent, Ooh, this and is our Stripe new. seller. Agent key. Yes, the agent, well, not... it's still always Stripe secret key, okay. but um, agent sounds cool, right? So um, we're gonna first provision a shared payment token and um, so this is a new API. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna reference the, you know, I'm gonna pretend I had collected a credit card already. And now I'm gonna apply usage limits. So uh, $50 USD, it's gonna expire, I think this is in a month. <clears throat> and this is what I was talking about earlier around the seller scoping. So, you know, we're gonna, this is internal testing, but you can imagine putting in another seller identifier here to basically say is only gonna work with you, right? So I'm gonna make this token that's, you know, PCI compliant. Um, so I'm not impacted by that at all. I can share it over the wire, over ACP with you, and then you can process it, and it only functions for you. So that's creating the shared payment token. Next, we want to update the processing of the payment. So with just one line of code, I've changed from accepting a payment method to accepting a shared payment granted token. Okay. So these are uh, tokens that are issued by you, the agent, granted to me for processing. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this one more time. So first we should see the shared payment token get provisioned and then we should see the payment intent run. So we'll give that a go. Great, so the shared payment token first got made, right? Now this is an issued token. So the objects that are in the agent's domain are ones that they issue. And then the objects that are in the seller's domain are ones that are granted to them. So I can see that I've you know enabled it for Stripe payments. That's the underlying payment method that I as, the, or I, as the agent, have collected. We have some risk details that we, we could poke around and look at as well. Of course, it's seller scoped. We can see its usage to date, so it hasn't been used at all yet. And then its limits, of course, which were that, uh, that $50 limit. And then we can go look at the payment intent, right? So I've captured you know, $20 of the 50 available to me. Um, and you know, we'll see that it actually provisions a payment method on my side. Now this isn't a payment method I could freely use again. It's still in the confines of that limit that was initially put there. And I can get some basic details about that payment method so I could explain to the customer, you know, if they want to see the order and what card was used, I could show them the last four. Um, but again, I, I don't have free infinite access to this credential. It's based off with the limitations that were applied out the get-go. Um, and I can see reference to you know, that shared payment token that was there and it succeeded. Now, we should probably prove that the limits really work. So we'll clear this out and we'll go back and let's give a way lower limit. So let's say this is only gonna work for $10. Uh, but, again, but again, I'm gonna run $20 here. So let's run it one more time. This sh uh, good, there's an error. 
the shared to payment token got provisioned, right? So no problem there. It's limited at the $10. And then when we actually went to run it, we saw that the request amount is greater than the shared, than the shared payment granted tokens limit, right? So I define the restrictions on the agent side between the buyer and the agent. I share that token with the seller. If the payment intent that they want to process is in scope of those permissions, great. If not, it can be rejected. So at what point in the, in the workflow is this code executed, the shared payment token creation? If, I'm, if I think of this from an end user point of view, so I've typed into my, uh, my chat that I want to purchase something, I've clicked on buy. Yep. At what point in this whole cycle is, uh, is that run? It's at that buy moment. Ah. Um, and we, this might change over time as mm -hmm. we start expanding towards recurring payments and async payments and other kinds of flows. But you know, you imagine uh, in that uh, ACP powered checkout flow, I've I've requested to buy a product. You know, show me information about it, its amount, the sales, the tax, the shipping, all that kind of breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, I'll maybe change the quantity, change my shipping address. That could impact the price. So we're sort of accumulating all the information we need to know to actually understand what the, the total spend limit has to be. And, and up until that point, yeah. it's not necessarily anything to do with Stripe. Yeah, or so... It could be, or it, it, it may it be. It certainly not. could yeah. be, right? Yeah. So the seller might be using Stripe to help figure out tax or right. figure out you know, amounts, or you know, over time we might build other tools to make it easier to integrate as a seller. Um, but really that's just the back and forth, and certainly you know, product catalog and mm. other kinds of things too. Um, so there's a back and forth sort of brokering negotiation of like, Let's get the amount, uh, let's get the items we want nailed, mm. the amount it's gonna be for. And then right when I click buy, where typically, you know, if we go back to the pre-agentic flow, um, I would relay the payment method ID I had collected with Stripe elements in the front end, and then, you know, ran that over to a payment end. That's the moment where I'm gonna take that payment method I collected and then provision a shared payment token, and then that's what I'm sending over. Mm -hmm. So pretty similar timeline towards, in terms of how you're relaying the payment method, um, you're just, you know, sort of minting that uh, SPT at that point in time. So I like how the uh, payment intent there, there's there's literally just one line yeah. that's changed, which is you're providing the payment token ID instead of the payment method. Yeah. <clears throat> and then additional to that, you're creating this new shared payment token object. Yeah. I want to look at a little bit the seller details. Yeah, sure. Um, can you explain that block to me? That's yeah, sure. new to me. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, we think it's important that um, buyers know who they're transacting with um, and that as agents are provisioning these kinds of tokens, there are programmatic guarantees about the usage limits and who it's, who it's going to, right? Mm -hmm. And part of what Stripe is building with the Stripe network is a mechanism to you know, sort of publicly express who you are as a business, but that's also sort of an anchor point uh, in, in certainly in a programmatic uh, flow, like an identifier you can use to, to know you are giving a specific Stripe seller the ability to use that payment credential. So does that mean every Stripe seller has their own um, ID that's sort of given to them from Stripe? Yeah, so you know, Stripe network's still rolling out, businesses can start onboarding, and then they'll be able to namespace an identifier like that. Okay, and so, so they get a namespace from Stripe, which they then have to provide to the seller details object. Yeah. I see, interesting. Where do you see this going in in the future? How how? Well, two questions. How can people onboard to this? Is there sure. any sort of uh, gateway to onboard? Yeah, and then sure. where do you see this going? In yeah. The so uh, anyone who's interested can go to agenticcommerce.dev, where you can learn more about the protocol mm -hmm. that we co-developed with OpenAI. Um, we also have documentation on uh, the GitHub repository for that. Uh, which is linked out there. And then Stripe, of course, if you go to docs.stripe.com slash agentic commerce, you can learn more about some of the technology we built here. And, and do you have to apply to be onto uh, the sort of network or can you just onboard yourself? I have to double check that, but um, we're trying to make all these tools as self-serve as possible, right. um, both uh, for things like shared payment tokens that we're going to be rolling out over time, certainly the, the Stripe network. Yeah. So the other part of that is where do you see this going in the future? Yeah, so I, I think... Um, you know, yesterday's announcement with uh, instant checkout and ChatGPT, it's a really exciting moment. You know, one, like, I think we all feel pretty confident that, uh, you know, we're increasingly using products like that to replace search. And I think certainly over our testing over the last few months, it's really cool to buy stuff in it. So I think we're just excited to see kind of uh, what's the consumer reaction, how do sellers, you know, uh, 
best integrate into these kind of experiences. So we're really focused on just rolling out that shape of product immediately. Um, but of course, there are many kinds of things you want to buy. There are many different buyer profiles. Um, so of course, that's more of a consumer-oriented launch. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be tons of B2B stuff. Um, so I think it's going to be super cool. Yeah. So the instant checkout with ChatGPT, is that using this protocol and this that, underlining? Yes, and that's using the shared payment tokens as well. Ah, oh, so there's a, a fantastic example. Yeah, I think it's really away. cool that yeah. like a lot of the stuff we're showing here is live. Yeah. Uh, and really working so, and, and of course, just on stage earlier, we were talking with uh, Etsy and Shopify, mm -hmm. who are rolling out here as well. So it's been really great working with them and OpenAI and everyone to like really get something live, really build, get customer feedback. Um, super exciting. Part of this that I think is, is really fascinating is when you start to think of how it can be used with um, maybe products that don't uh, exist. So maybe like ephemeral products, like a holiday where you have to, totally. you know, you can use the LLM to do all this decisional yeah. logic for you, spin up a product that you can create in Stripe and then um, allow you to check out in the chat for that product totally. while it sort of temporarily exists. Totally. Totally. Yeah, it's mm. it's gonna be really incredible to see just like the ability to create new products even easier, hopefully sell them even easier, and that sort of flywheel that might emerge there is be super cool. So, awesome. Yeah. Steve, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks to for having to us. me. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks.